All right, so guys, how many of you like American Ninja Warrior? Ooh, I Okay. I was thinking of sort of like an analogy to get this rolling here, and I thought the all of the SAT is kind of like American Ninja Warrior because it's just a set of obstacles that we have to get through, right? And we all have different ways that we would get through it. Some of us would. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, they all do different stuff when they go on those obstacles with American Ninja Warrior. Some of them are doing cartwheels. Some are like grabbing stuff. Some of them like climb up walls. We all have different ways that we would do it. We all have different strengths and we all have different weaknesses. Okay, so there is no one way to do the SAT reading test. Okay? That's kind of what I'm trying to get at. It's just an obstacle. We have to get through it, right? Okay, so don't feel like there's only one way to do the reading test. There are many ways to do it. So, uh, we're gonna be looking at that, and my clicker's dead, so. All right, so the reading test is the first uh, section of the SAT. It's the first thing you're gonna have to do when you start on the day of. It's 52 questions, 65 minutes, which means you have about a minute or 15 seconds per question. That includes the reading that you have to do, okay? So you gotta keep moving. That's the biggest problem with the reading test. That was also true when they did the ACT, it was the same problem. People never were able to finish the reading test. So you gotta watch the time, you gotta watch the clock. It's four single passages plus a pair of passages. So one of them is in literature. There's one literature passage. Passage. It's literary, so it's the type of stuff you'd see in like English class. There's two social studies passages, and then there are two science passages. So knowing that already makes life easier, because if you know you're reading a science passage, what's going to be more important in the science passage, passage than in a literature passage? What are you looking for? <laughs> Maybe numbers. It's going to have a certain vocabulary, right? There's going to be certain words that a biology essay uses that a literary essay does not, okay? So, just know that. For each of those passages, <coughs> of those five, there are 10, uh, 10 or 11 questions per passage, okay? So that gets you to 52, right? Five times 10, and then there's a couple that are 11. So 52 questions uh, total. 65 minutes, and they range in complexity. So some of the readings are more difficult and some of them are easier. Also, uh, as I was prepping for this, I've read a couple times that the questions are asked in the order they happen in the readings, okay? So have you ever had a worksheet where the questions were out of order and you had to go back? That's not the way that the SAT is. The questions are in order as they are in the reading, okay? So that kind of helps, right? Kind of like, okay, I feel a little bit better about this. There are three kind of bodies of questions that are asked. The first group is information and ideas. And if you look on the back side of this sheet, you have this slide types of questions. So those are the close reading questions. <coughs> What's the best evidence for this? What's the main idea? Can you summarize what's the point of this essay? Okay? Uh, meanings of words and phrases. So you don't get quizzed on pure vocab, but they'll ask you, what is the best meaning of this word in context? So it's more like, use the context clues. What do you think the meaning of this word is based on the words around it? The next group of questions. Come on. Are rhetorical. So what do you think the author's doing there? When they use this certain word, why do you suppose they use this word and not this word? How are they trying to impress the reader? Okay, so what were they trying to do? What claims did they make? What reasons did they give? What was their style? How did they try to persuade you? Okay, and then finally, uh, synthesis questions where you have to make connections, um, especially with the paired text where there's, there's two shorter passages next to each other. They're going to ask you, how are these passages similar? How are they different? What would author A say to author B? Sometimes they set up the two passages like a disagreement. Okay, so this person believes this, this person believes this. 
what sort of argument would they have if they talked to each other? So you have to do some synthesis stuff. You also have to use quantitative information like graphs, charts, and tables. So you're gonna see that as we get into the examples we do today, where you're going to have to compare what was said in the essay to what is shown in a graph or a chart. So you're gonna to have to kind of read between the lines or between the lines and the chart and figure out, does this chart match what's being said in the essay? So it's not just reading words, it's also reading graphic representations of ideas, okay? So there's three approaches you can take to each reading passage, and you also have this slide, okay? You could skim the passage first and then read the questions. With this approach, they say, you should try to read the whole passage in about three minutes. That's fast, right? So you are really skimming, okay? And then read the questions and refer back to the passage as you need to as you're working through the question. They say don't spend any more than 30 seconds on any one question. Remember, time is of the essence in this section of the test. The way that you can practice this skill if you want to, do, if you want to try that skimming approach is grab a newspaper, grab a magazine, Go find an article online, whatever, and skim it quickly and ask yourself, what are the main points of this essay without actually reading the whole thing? Because honestly, that's an important college skill, skimming, right? We don't have time in our lives. Where are my two of five people? We don't have time in our lives to read all of Uncle Tom's Cabin. We sometimes <laughs> might just have to skim it, okay? And say that we read it and pray that there's not a quiz, okay? That's life. The goal with the first approach is efficiency. So you're not actually reading the whole passage. Can that be dangerous? Yes, that could be dangerous. That could get you in trouble. But if time's the issue, this might be a good approach. The next uh, approach that you could take to the reading section is actually read the questions first, okay? So read all the questions first. As you're reading those questions, you're marking lines that are mentioned. So a lot of the questions start off with like, on line two, so, what do you mark up? Before you even read it, you mark up line two. You put a note next to it. You say, hey, there's gonna be a question about this. Okay, then you go back and skim the passage and you only slow down on the passages that you've marked, okay? You could practice this by actually going through multiple SAT reading sections. You would not want to like just try this out on the day of the test, that would be bad because there's two cautions with this approach. The first one is, if you read the questions first, have you ever tried an English class? You didn't feel like reading, so you read the questions first, and you're like, I'm confused now. Okay? That's what will happen if you try approach number two for the first time on test day. So don't save, don't save this one for the day of the test. This is one we wanna practice multiple times, okay? The other thing that might happen um, is you might waste your time because of the fact that you're Read, don't get stuck reading those questions super slow. You still need to read quickly, okay? Third approach is the standard, like what you're supposed to do, the least suggested is read the whole entire passage and then deal with the questions. They say that's the worst one because you're not gonna, if you do that, you will not have time to finish the whole section of the test, okay? So, the reason I gave you a copy of this slide is today while we're practicing this stuff, I want you to try one of these, okay? Try something different from what you would normally think is the, the normal routine, okay? So try one of these two. Either skim it first or read the questions first. If we have enough time, I'm hoping we can get through two sections, but we'll just see about that, okay? So the whole point of this though, as you're doing this, figuring out what works for me as a test taker. We all, just like American Ninja Warrior, we would all approach those obstacles differently based on our strengths, okay? Right? The way that Garrett Passmore would get through American Ninja Warrior is different than the way that Cade Kabarik would, right? Cade, okay. You look a lot like your dad. So I figured that was <laughs> All right, so here's my like top six, my top six pieces of advice, okay? The first thing I think you need to do with a pencil, as you guys are getting into the, the test, you need to annotate the text. 
What I mean by that is, I know, right? That's right. The reason this is important, this test booklet, after the day of the test, it's going to get shipped back to SAT. They're going to keep it for a while just to make sure you didn't cheat. And then after that, they're going to recycle it. Okay? What a waste, right? Okay, so why not mark it up as much as you can? Because this is your test. That's what I'm trying to get you to think here. It's your test. Mark it up as much as you want. So, if you know that one of the options, like A, B, C, D, you know that D is wrong, cross it out. Don't waste your time going back and reading that later. Okay? If you know that um, it asks you about line two, circle line two, underline it, whatever, because it's got numbered lines here. Okay? If you do the reading first approach, take notes as you're going. Now, don't take a ton of notes because you're going to run out of time. But annotate, mark it up. Find a reason to cross out three wrong answers, right? Because we know multiple choice tests, you can always kind of work your way down to the best answer. Find the best answer, eliminate as fast as you can, eliminate the wrong answers. Don't get stuck on the two best, get down to the one best choice, okay? Predict, cover up the possible answers, read a question, like, so let's say I've read the passage. I'm gonna cover up A, B, C, D. Ask me the question. I might just think in my mind what the right answer is, and then they look, is what I predicted one of the answers? Hey, there it is, done, okay? Now, the danger of that is you could be wrong, but you know, sometimes it's worth it. Keep an eye on the clock, okay? Massively important. You will feel really rushed in this section. Read the introduction. See if you guys look on if you open these packets, you may now open the packets. On page two, at the very top, it says questions one through 10 are based on the following passage. And then it gives you this really short intro that's kind of tempting to skip over, right? You did skip it, right? Because normally we're like, we gotta get to the text. Okay, by reading this, this passage is adapted from George Eliot's Silas Marner. Okay, so you know the name of this book. Originally published in 1861, give us the date. Silas was a weaver and a notorious miser, but then the gold he had hoarded was stolen. Shortly after, Silas adopted a young child, Effie, the daughter of an impoverished woman who had died suddenly. That might be a problem if we skip that, okay? Because it tells us who Effie is, and it tells us who Silas is, the two characters in this literary passage we're gonna read, okay? So always read the intro because it might give you clues about stuff, especially if you go um, if you go to like page nine, this passage is adapted from Patricia Waldron, Why Birds Fly in a Blue Formation, copyright 2014 by American Association for the Advancement of Science. And what does that tell me this passage is gonna be about? It's gonna be one of the science ones, okay? So it triggers in my mind, okay, this is one of the science passages. It usually goes, usually, in the SAT, it's the literature one first, then a social studies, then a science, then a social studies, then a science, okay? So it alternates, it starts with literature most of the time, always, and then social studies and science alternating at the end. So read the intro because it gives you context of what you're reading. And then have a strategy, and that's what we're working on today, is developing what's the strategy that's gonna work for me, okay? It's gonna be different for all of us, just like American Ninja Warrior. Okay, so I'm not sure if we're going to get through all this. I want to go till 3.30. How many of you guys have to leave at 3.10? Okay, so lots of you are leaving at 3.10. So here we go, 20 minutes. So what I want to do is I want to try this passage and this passage. We're going to do these two, and we're going to come down to 10 minutes. You're going to feel rushed. That's okay. How many of you are in track? When you're in track, don't you run parts of your race faster than the actual race itself, and then you put those pieces together when you actually run the full race? That's what we're gonna do today. So we're gonna take pieces, right, because you normally have five passages. We're gonna take shorter pieces, we're gonna run these intervals, we're gonna do them really fast, okay? So I'm gonna give you 10 minutes, and you can work in groups, so that's like, that helps you out. I want you guys to pick one of these strategies, okay? So of the strategies, scam or questions first. Pick one of those strategies, I'm gonna give you 10 minutes, so I have a clock running. Maybe, if I can get it going. Okay. When 10 minutes is up, we're done. And then we're going on to the next one, okay?
Everybody ready? Go. You actually have 49 seconds left, but based on the amount of people who are talking, I'm going to assume you're mostly done. Oh yeah. But if this was a real test scenario, obviously you wouldn't talk. And secondly, you would go back and you would be checking your answers if you budgeted time. Okay, if you budgeted time to go back, that'd be great. Okay, so let me ask you this. What's harder, track practice or a track meet? Yeah. I think track practice is harder. Okay, when you think about when you actually feel like throwing up, it's during practice. Okay, so if this felt hard, that's good. That's why we practice. We practice under situations that are more difficult than the real thing, so that when the real thing hits, we're ready for it. So, would you like to hear the 10 correct answers? Yeah. Sure. Okay, well, now, just everybody listen, don't talk. I will hand out um, the correct answers for that whole packet because this packet is one full reading test. So we're just doing one passage today, but you could use the rest of it for practice. So I hope that none of you guys leave these here today on your table. Please take them with you. So here's the correct answers, ready? You listen. One, D, two, A, three, A, four, B, five, D, six, B, seven, C, eight, B, 9D, 10D. Okay, so I got to do it right. If you guys want to see, number one is D. If, what's up, what's up, guys? if you want to see the explanations for these answers, you can go to Khan Academy. This is test number seven that we use today, and it'll also say test number seven on the answer sheet. You can go back and it will give you for every question, the explanation of why each item is the letter that it is. So what I want to talk about for a minute is, how did the pace feel? Okay. Yeah, people will not be talking in the actual test. Okay, let me kick down. So, it is a fast test. You've got to keep moving. Did anybody read? Who read first? Okay, skim. Who skimmed first? Okay. Who did the questions first? Questions first, not as many people. Okay, so I want you guys to think about what worked well. What, what did not work? Okay, so Alyssa knows she doesn't like skimming. Okay, Alyssa, I think if I were you, I would try to skim, like try one more test in the same time, kind of same time setting. If you still hate it, ditch it. Ditch that strategy, try something else, okay? So, what you gotta do, and this only comes through repetition, is find what works for you. Does skimming work? Does questions first work? Or do I just wanna do option three, the normal, read it all first, answer all the questions? Because you know what? If that's what you feel most comfortable with, that's what you should do, okay? We don't want to put you in a test, and then you like, are trying to do something that doesn't work for you. That's not how the American Ninja Warriors do it. That's like, that's gonna be your take. Um, what I think you guys should do, if I were you, I would take this, take this packet. There are four more passages. I want to point a couple things out to you that we were not able to cover. Okay, I will. I will. Uh, I'll share this out somewhere. I'll put it on the website as well. Well, can you guys on Khan Academy when you go to the tests, and yeah, they're online, but on the left hand side, you can see where you could download them. You can download this exact same paper test and answers. This is number seven. Okay. okay. So I want you to see on page six. There's a chart and graph. Okay. They will ask you chart and graph questions. I want you to see on page 12, they have two passages side by side. Okay, so they'll ask you to compare the two passages to one another. Okay, so you guys have a full reading section right here in your hands. If you, uh, in P Town people, if you guys want to leave your email, we can email all this stuff to you too. Okay, so we'll do the email sign up thing. Okay, so what I suggest is that you do kind of what we just did in a small group some other time. To get the feeling of the pace, to decide what strategies work for you, 
to look at the correct answers and talk with each other about why that was right, why it was wrong, why did I miss that? Okay, that's the type of really good, close, like small group feedback that you want that's gonna make you better at this. Okay, remember, if it's like a sport, we've gotta have lots of repetition, we've gotta have lots of practice so that we're ready on game day. We have to have a strategy. We can't just show up. Finally, um, there's a slide on here for more information, more practice opportunities. There's an app, SAT Daily Practice, or maybe you have that on your iPhones, okay? It gives you a question each day, okay? So that's a way that you can do practice. There's all sorts of websites, Khan Academy. Um, there's the full test. You can click that link. It'll take you to the full test. We use number seven today, so you see that, right? Any questions that you guys have about the reading section? Okay. Biggest thing with reading section, you have to move quickly. Did I spell Khan wrong? Yeah. H. Oops, sorry, Khan. Remember, here's the whole point. Does the SAT test your intelligence? No. No, it does not. Does it test your reading comprehension level? It sort of does, but not really. Okay? Because, Kyle, if it just came down to A, B, C, D, right, you can game that. Okay? And what I'm saying is, all the SAT really tests is your ability to take the SAT. And by practicing, seriously, by practicing, you can get a better score. And as silly as it is, I know it's really a messed up system, right? Why is my whole Yes. Why is my whole life tied up with one test? That's simply the way it's the way it is. So guys, the reason that I think SAT prep is important for you is because the higher score that you have, the more options it gives you after you graduate high school. Okay? Yes, it's just one number. However, it gives you lots of other options later on in life. It, it possibly gives you thousands of more dollars uh, depending on the college that you want to go to, okay? Is that the way it should be? I don't know, we can debate that another day, but that's the way it is. And so um, that's kind of our goal of trying to get you ready for that. I just want you to remember, it's just an obstacle course, like you could practice for any other thing. If you practice enough, you can do well on it, regardless of reading level, regardless of natural intelligence, regardless of IQ, you can do well on it if you practice enough. But you have to put in the repetitions to get to that point, especially with the reading test because you have so little time. Okay, so here's all the answers to that packet if you guys want to do any other sections of it. Um, and good to see you guys. Anything else for some really awesome. Yeah, we're like a big